Hey guys, what's going on? It's Clever Techie, and I'm going to show you how to install Ruby on Rails on Windows 7. Now, let me just show you something real quick. Here's an image I created to understand uh, Ruby on Rails a little bit better. Okay, so Ruby is a programming language, and it stands on its own. It doesn't re really need anything else to... Uh, you know to run so you can code in Ruby without rails and it will be fine but rails as a framework as a Ruby's framework provides additional functionality functions libraries that make it a lot faster and easier to develop websites and that's why we want rails now you can see here that uh, Ruby has all these gems, and gems are, you can think of them as just additional functions, libraries, plugins, whatever you want to call them, and uh, Rails is just one of those gems. And uh, DevKit is what's going to make it possible to basically just install all these gems on Windows. You know, that's all that we're going to need it for. Now, the only two uh, gems that I would uh, just keep in mind for now if you're new to Ruby and Rails is uh, you know, obviously Rails Jam and Bundler Jam. What Bundler Jam does is it manages and installs other gems for you. So for example, if you're, if you're installing uh, Rails uh, as a uh, Ruby's Jam, usually a big gem like that with a lot of code and libraries and functions usually it will depend on other gems which it does and basically bundler gem takes care of that so rather than installing all the gems it depend um, all the gems that rails depends on individually you'll just use bundler uh, to install all those gems automatically and then you'll see what I mean later on so let's let's start installing Ruby first. All right, so open up the browser and go to rubyinstaller.org and then just press this big download button. Now, the one that you want to get is definitely a Ruby 2.16 32-bit or Ruby 2.16 64-bit, depending on what your operating system is. You don't want to get the latest version because I've tested it and the 2.2.2 doesn't work on Windows. And if you want to spend hours and days trying to figure out how to make it work on the Windows, go for it. But I would just definitely get the 2.16, which is the, the version that works on Windows. Okay, so I'm, I'm going to get the 64-bit, which is uh, the operating system I have. Download that. And if you scroll down here, I'm going to um, download the uh, development kit. 32-bit and development kit for 64-bit. I'm going to get the 64-bit one, download it, and just minimize that. Go to the Downloads folder and uh, just run Ruby on Rails installer. Okay, okay, accept. And uh, I'm just going to install it under C Ruby. It just makes it easier to access. You guys can just pick your directory, and I'm going to check these two here. Add Ruby executables to your path, and associate RB and RBW files with the Ruby installation. Install. Just wait for it to install now. And finish. Now I'm also going to run the dev kit here. Run. And I'm going to navigate to my Ruby directory, which is on here C and then navigate to the Ruby directory and I'm going to create a new folder called DevKit just to keep it all organized together and click OK and I'm going to extract to that folder click extract okay just wait for it to extract And then we're going to configure our dev kit so that it works with Ruby, which
which will make it possible to install gems later on. So I'm gonna go to the directory where I extracted the dev kit, which is here under Ruby dev kit, and then here's what we're gonna do: hold Shift and right mouse click anywhere in this area. Uh, here, we're gonna click here. So you guys can see open command window here. So you're holding shift and you're pressing the right mouse button. And that will open the command under that directory, which we're in right now, which is what we want. Now, go ahead and type Ruby DKRB init, init INIT. And uh, that's the first step. For um, configuring your dev kit, and then go ahead and type rubydk.rb install. Now you might get this error: invalid configuration. No Ruby is listed. Please, please fix config.yml. So what you want to do here is, in the same folder, go ahead and open up the config.yml. And uh, you want to add your Ruby directory here under these uh, three dashes. And you want to use a dash before that, just like that. Otherwise, it won't work. And then just enter your directory where you installed Ruby. Make sure to use a forward slash too. And then just file, save, exit. And then we're going to open up the command prompt here again. In the same uh, in a dev kit directory, and then type Ruby decay that are being installed again, and you should get these uh, messages, and that means it has successfully configured dev kit to use with Ruby. So that's taken care of. All right. Next. Okay, let's just go back to command prompt here, and we can type Ruby dash v. And it's going to show up uh, which version of Ruby we're running. So that means we've uh, successfully installed Ruby and we have it in our environment variables. Now, just to show you something real fast that Ruby actually works on its own, let's go back to our Ruby root folder here and create a new folder. I'm just going to create a folder named code and enter that folder. And then I'm going to create a new file, text file, and I'm going to call it anything, just call it anything you want. I'm going to name it hi.rb, which is, uh, rb is a Ruby extension. And then I'm going to create a little program, a Ruby program real fast. And I have my code here that I'm going to paste. So it's a very basic type of uh, Ruby program. Don't worry about what all this means. Just go ahead and copy this or just create your own Ruby program if you know how to code in Ruby. And then I'm going to save and close this. And then I'm just going to open up the command prompt here again by holding shift, right clicking, and open command window here. And I'm just going to type hi.rb. And the program works. My name is Walter. I'm the boss. And that's what we have here. That's what the program is supposed to be. So Ruby is all working. Okay, that's great. Now we're going <coughs> to go into the next part. But before we uh, install Rails, let me just show you something real fast here. If you go to Ruby folder and then go to the library folder, and then Ruby again, and then Gems 2.10, and then Gems again. Here are all the gems that are currently installed in uh, for Ruby. So going back to this, that's what the gems are. And uh, you don't have Rails installed here yet because we haven't installed it yet. But it came with Rake, RDoc, and Test Unit. So these are just three gems that we have installed right now. All right, let's go ahead and install Rails. Just open up the command prompt. Any in any directory, and uh, 
this is going to be super easy. Just type gem install rails. And then uh, this uh, should take a while. Just uh, be patient on this one. You should start getting uh, the progress. Progress uh, text really soon. Yep, there it goes. That's all you should be seeing. It's, it's, so remember how I talked about that uh, Rails actually depends on a bunch of other gems? So that's what it's doing right now. It's installing those other gems in order to run Rails. So Rails depends, um, needs other gems to run. So that's what it's doing right now here. Okay, I'm just going to wait until this is over. Should take a while, actually. Here you can see the bundler, which is another gem that I showed here, which manages and installs other gems. And while this is happening, if uh, you still have the gems folder open, you can tell <laughs> there's a bunch of other gems that showed up here. So that's where all these gems live. Uh, Ruby's gems live. So we can, for example, open up the Rails gem. Basically, gems are just a bunch of libraries in code that Ruby uses, and uh, that's how easy it is to install all of them. Just type gem install Rails, and it does. It installs all their all those uh, gems for us. Now, after a while, what I noticed is just gonna stop, right? And uh, I think what's happening here is it's actually finished installing all these gems. So when you see parsing documentation for Rails 4.2.4 and installing RI documentation for Rails 4.24, that actually means it's done. And if it hangs like that for you, just press, go, go to your command prompt and just press control C and that will interrupt and just hit the S and trust me that this will work there's nothing that has been unfinished so you you have now successfully installed rails so we're just gonna test it out and see if it works now let's go back to our Ruby root directory and create a new folder named rails and then go back, uh, oh, let's actually hold shift again, right click, and open the command window here so that we're in that Rails directory. And now what we're going to do is we're going to use Rails to generate a new app. We're going to generate a new Rails app. So all we have to do is just type Rails, new, and then our app name, whatever you want to call it. I'm just going to name it the first app. And Rails is doing its job right now. It's creating all those files for us for our brand new app. And I think my command prompt um, hanged up again. I'm not sure why it does that. I don't know if you guys are going to get the same thing, but I'm just going to hit Control C now. Interrupt the progress. Now, here you can see your uh, the Rails has created a new folder called First App, which is the name of our app. I'm just going to open it up and look at that. It's got all these files in here. 
<coughs> generated by the Rails uh, framework, by, by the Rails jam. Now, all we have to do now is uh, I'm just going to type bundle install. And, uh, oh, first of all, you got to be inside the, uh, the app holder. So go ahead and go to uh, type CD and then the name of your app. And then I can, you know, test to see that I'm inside this folder here, inside the app folder. And I'm going to go ahead and now type bundle install. And if you remember again, bundle is, uh, takes care of installing all the other uh, gems for us. And that's exactly what it's going to do now. It's going to install all the uh, gems that we need to run uh, the Ruby on Rails application. And uh, if you're still... Uh, if you want to check it out, it's in those gems are being added into that uh, Ruby library folder. Okay, this is the last thing. All right, it didn't hang this time, so great. We're now ready to run our uh, Ruby on Rails application and just type Rails server. That's all you need to do. And that should successfully start your first Ruby on Rails application. Just wait for it to load here and then you're going to access it from HTTP column forward forward slash localhost column 3000. Just going to wait a little bit here because it takes a while. Alright, that means the app has been loaded successfully. Let's check it out. Go to the browser, type localhost, localhost, slash local host there we go 3000 and there is everything oh I misspelled it got local host there you go local host column 3000 if you get this page welcome aboard you're writing Ruby on rails that means you have successfully installed the Ruby rails and you're ready to use this awesome uh, programming language and framework to make websites. That is all.